Hi everybody, I'm Kayla Price filling in for Tyler Lennon and today we have two special guests with us to talk about the Hopkins County Veterans Memorial and the upcoming Freedom Ball. But first I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Avco Roofing, The Beauty Parlor, and Realtor Lindsay Lee. So joining me today are Tommy Allison and Tommy would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm uh retired after practicing law 50 years and my military service involved a three-year tour in the Marine Corps and uh, let's see 1966 through 1969 I spent 13 months in Vietnam 1968 and 1969 and while I was in there I served as a prosecutor and defense counsel but also when you're in the Marine Corps you're an infantry officer first. So when I got to Vietnam, they had run short of infantry officers after the Battle of Way, And they sent three of us out with rifle companies. Uh, and we operated below the demilitarized zone uh, against the 320th North Vietnamese Division. And I served as executive officer and commanding officer of India Company. Uh, 3rd Battalion, 3rd Marine Regiment, 3rd Marine Division, which is about a 250 Marine Rifle Company. And <clears throat> I stayed out there three months, and then they uh, ran short of lawyers, so they brought me back in, thankfully. And uh, anyway, I finished out my tour there in Quang Tree Combat Base and came back to Sulphur Springs at the end of August of 1969. Excellent. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for being here today. And Danny, if you would, Danny Davis, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself also, please. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm not originally from Sulphur Springs. And when my parents moved up here in 1997, I was already in the service at that time. I joined in 1991, just as the Gulf War was uh, kind of getting going really good. And uh, so I fell in love with Sulphur Springs when I come back to visit. So that's what brought me here to Sulphur Springs. But I joined, I joined the Air Force right out of high school. I did 23 years. And uh, seven months into being in the Air Force, I was shipped to Saudi Arabia to uh, work airplanes, the F-111, that's Dayton myself, uh, to, uh, to support Southern Watch over there. Um, I got a total of about four and a half years in the Middle East. I, I've been over there so many times, I, I've forgotten the amount of times I've been over there. But uh, about four and a half years total time over there. I've served uh, here in Texas, uh, North Carolina, New Mexico twice, and then I spent about five years in England. Um, I'm now the veteran service officer for the county and the treasurer as well, and I absolutely love being here in Sulphur Springs and the community and how they support veterans. Excellent. Well, thank y'all both for being here today. And Tommy, I wanted to ask you about the Veterans Memorial. Of course, it's down on the square here in Sulphur Springs, but it's kind of a multifaceted display or <laughs> a memorial. And would you talk a little bit about what all is down there for folks to see and do? Well, uh, of course you have the uh, columns with all the names of the veterans who served. Uh, you've got a backdrop uh, with a historic scene that was taken from an actual postcard during World War II of uh, uh, somebody uh, coming home from war on the train uh, there on South Davis Street, or excuse me, North Davis Street. And uh, you have the uh, uh, Eternal Flame, and that was contributed by, uh, uh, was it Rhonda Young? Yeah, excuse me, Rhonda Young and her mother, uh, and uh, so that was real well done. And of course, earlier, in the early 90s, uh, when I first got to Sulphur Springs, there was no, there wasn't any kind of memorial at all on the square. To veterans or any oh there was that little tablet under the magnolia tree <laughs> and uh, all that kind of thing but that was it and uh, so we got uh, when the memorial came about through Katie Sinclair and her husband primarily 
we got all that organized and square, uh, we <clears throat> thought that it would be good if we would put something up. But before that, uh, the late Judge Joe Minner, the county judge, and I uh, got to talk, and he was a Korean War veteran, and we thought it would be neat if we had a, uh, some kind of memorial. So that's how that soldier statue came about. Uh, a little interesting tidbit on that. I had met a lawyer in Dallas who uh, was friends with Glenna Goodacre, and she is the sculptor who designed the Women's Veterans Memorial in uh, Washington, D.C. And I called him to see if she would be interested, and he said she's booked up from here on out. But she did give me the name of another Korean War veteran, Larry Ledke, a sculptor in Houston. And we worked out a deal with him, and uh, the uh, he just did a great job on that sculpture. It took uh, Judge Benner and I about three years to raise $150,000 to pay for that thing, but we finally did and got it dedicated. And uh, then after that came our Veterans Memorial. And when you put all of that together, along with all the landscaping and sidewalks and everything that the city has done, uh, it just really works out well, I think, not only for people to come and visit and see the memorial and that type of thing, but also a great place for a forum for different uh, events and things like they've been having downtown lately. Every weekend, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, the um, veteran that you mentioned with the rifle, that is such a lovely photo with the courthouse in the background. Mm -hmm. You often see it on postcards yeah. and in photos, so it, it makes for a lovely setting. Well, it's interesting about Larry Ludke. His patron was Ross Perot. Oh. And uh, he did a lot of sculptures for the CIA in Washington, D.C. to honor some of their service people. And if you go to Austin, uh, on the side next to the University of Texas, behind the Capitol, you will see five or six little kids' sculptures playing out on the Capitol grounds. He did those. Mm -hmm. But this particular soldier statue is the only active or soldier that's in action, so to speak, as opposed to a bust or something like that. Well, that's nice. Good, mm -hmm. good history. Good draw for our downtown. So who is eligible to have their name added as a veteran to the walls that are associated well, with the memorial? Anybody, first of all, you've got to have a DD-214. And second of all, you've got to have <coughs> uh, an honorable discharge or a, anything other than a dishonorable discharge. There's a $100 fee. You fill out an application form that you can get from any member of the Veterans Memorial Committee. Uh, Pam Elliott still has some, but Don Rafter, I don't know, Danny May. And anyway, <clears throat> to be eligible, you have to be a service person. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have served in a war or anything like that, as long as you're a resident of Hopkins County. Now, uh, if you passed away here in Hopkins County, your relatives can put your name with that documentation on the wall or on the wall as well. And of course, ever so often, I think we've got some engraving coming up this summer, uh, we'll try to engrave 200 to 500 names uh, of people who have signed up since then or who we discovered that can be uh, or eligible. And just to give you uh, some background real quick, uh, Richard Carpenter was a member of our committee and he personally went to every small cemetery in Hopkins County to discover if there were any veterans graves there so that they could be placed on the memorial. I mean, he really, and there's a bunch of them, and he worked really, really hard on that to make that a success. That's wonderful. So how many names are already engraved down there? Uh, I think that there's about 11,000, does that sound right? 
Okay. Uh, I think there's we'll go that with that. Many. Okay, I think there's that many. Excellent. Uh, and, and still room for more. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of room. There's lots of room for those. And uh, there's also some projects in the winds to put, uh, I think they've already done this, they put the names of those veterans who were killed in action on the ends of the panels. Okay. So you can see those and, and that type of thing. Excellent. Okay, so um, along with that, obviously with the eternal flame and the water wall, there's a computer where folks can look to see where their name is listed or their loved one's name is listed. There's obviously maintenance that goes along with that. What are some of the annual things you'll have to do to upkeep the memorial and keep it looking good? Well, about every five years, we have to repaint the woodwork over that computer the kiosk trellis area. Cathedral. And uh, sometimes we have to replace some boards and that type of thing. Uh, as far as annual maintenance is concerned, uh, we're constantly having to add names, uh, which is one thing, but we have, uh, we use a uh, sculptor engraver out of New Mexico who comes and engraves those names once a year. And so that's a pretty good little expense right there, several thousand dollars that we have to work in to keep this. The whole idea is to make this not not just like a, a cemetery memorial. This is a living memorial. We're adding names to it as people qualify and that type of thing. And it does seem to have an out of city and county draw. It seems like every time I'm down on the square, there are folks from out of town that are there looking up a family member's name or just viewing it. I mean, it seems to actually have a lot of visitors that come to town just to see it. Do you have any clue on how many folks usually come each year? Or? No, unfortunately I don't. I'm like you, I know a lot of them come, but in all fairness, a lot of them come to see the courthouse. True. <laughs> I mean, they're just amazed that, you know, uh, that's there and, it's, mm -hmm. and instead of being in the center of the square, it's on the corner, which is unique and uh, all that type of thing. So. Uh, that's a big draw, all of that, uh, when you put the two together that re people really enjoy it. And of course, <clears throat> if they're down there and they ask for help, people, our local citizens are nice enough to help them out and mm -hmm. whatever we can do. So I know y'all have had to replace the computer down there I think once. Is that something that comes about pretty regularly and then um, like you said, the engraving of the names. But other than that, it seems like with the the granite, everything was kind of built to last and be there. Now, one other project that we're working on is, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, during some power washing, they hit the wall and knocked off some of the paint on the names. And so we've been working on a project to put that back. And as you can imagine, that would be a very tedious operation because, unfortunately, we don't have the... Uh, original stencils that they used to paint mm -hmm. the names in the engraved engraved areas. So we've still got that to do and uh, the city has really been great. I can't thank Mark Maxwell enough for the support that he and the city council and everyone has given the memorial as well as Commissioner's Court. And uh, we, uh, uh, they, they uh, are in the process, the city just is in the process of replacing lights that got damaged down below or that shine up on our flags, and that was five or $6,000. So we're constantly in a fundraising mode and that type of thing, and it just, uh, it's just something if it's worthwhile doing, you've got to keep it up. Sure. And I'll give you a real brief example, Norfolk, Virginia, World War, they put up a World War II memorial and really great right there let it go for about 20 years and finally they decided well you know we need to do something about this it cost them a million five to get it brought back up to speed and we don't want to get into that situation and it wouldn't be fair to everybody who's worked on that everybody who's served to just let it go downhill true and we're not going to 
Excellent. Well, uh, why don't we take a break and hear a word from our sponsors and we'll be right back to talk more about the Veterans Memorial as well as the Freedom Ball. Hi, I'm Audra Clark, owner and stylist of The Beauty Parlor. We are located at 206 West Shannon Road in Sulphur Springs, Texas. We are Tony and Guy trained and we specialize in custom cut and color. You're already beautiful. Come let us highlight it. At AFCO Roofing, we strive to fulfill our mission statement of protecting homes, strengthening families, and building community. It's more than a slogan. It's the heartbeat of who we are and how we serve our customers. Located in Sulphur Springs near I-30 and Broadway, there's no project we can't handle. Call AFCO Roofing for all your home and commercial property needs. Hi, I'm Lindsay Lee, Realtor at Caldwell Banker Watson Company in Sulphur Springs. Born and raised in Hopkins County, I am the small town realtor you are looking for to help buy or sell your home. I specialize in farm and ranch, residential, and lake properties. Contact me today and let me do the work for you. Get your key with Lindsay Lee. We are back with Tommy Allison and Danny Davis talking about the Hopkins County Veterans Memorial and the upcoming Freedom Ball. So Danny, if you would tell us a little bit about the history of the Freedom Ball and what its purpose is. Okay, well, in 2017, um, Mandy Kennedy, she, she gave me a call and she's, uh, I, I think I'd been the veteran service officer about a year or two. So she called me and she wanted to put on a job fair out at Cedar Canyon. And uh, I said, a job fair? I said, hey, I, don't, I don't know how to do a job fair. And she's like, well, what do you know how to do? And I said, well, my background, the last 11 years, I was a first sergeant. So project management, HR type stuff, but I can do some project management stuff. So she's like, well, anything else? And I said, yeah, I, I did a lot of ceremonies and a lot of uh, award ceremonies and balls and just big events and that kind of stuff. And I jokingly said, why don't we just put on a ball like we did in the Air Force? And she took it serious. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, let's, let's try it. So it was just her and I kind of talking a little bit about it. So it took several months. And our first one, I mean, it was, it was, it was wild. But um, we ended up having it out at Cedar Canyon and had to get an overflow tent out there. The, the first year, it completely outgrew itself. I was in the overflow tent. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't and, us. Um, so we knew right there that we kind of had something, but we partnered. We weren't a 501c3, so in order for us to be a 501c3, we partnered with the Veterans Memorial, and the first year what we raised funds for was the Veterans Memorial, uh, back Robert Carpenter, we were talking about earlier, he had done so much research, and we're talking War of 1812 and Civil War veterans that had no sponsorship that Robert Carpenter had done all this research on and others, and we wanted to get their names on the wall. So that year, we raised, I want to say it was almost $60,000 uh, mm -hmm. just to put those names on the wall. And then that became the next two years why we would do the event was to honor veterans and to, and to raise funds to put that on the wall. Well, at the first event is what sold it for me is I was walk, it was about halfway through the event and I was walking through to, to do something and I had a, a veteran that I didn't know, young guy, stopped me and he said, this is the first time since I've left the military that I have felt appreciated for my service. And when he said that to me, immediately I thought to myself, this has got to be an annual event. So that's what we've done. We've turned it into the annual event and we raise money for the maintenance and the upkeep of the memorial. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of vandalism out there. So we raise money to help replace things. Um, we did have, we are having all new lighting put up out there. We, uh, we also did the KIA uh, names on the wall. We installed a camera because there was a dead zone area back there where you couldn't see anything as you walk through that corridor where the uh, Lace Park Elms are. So we put a camera to where you can see down through there any vandalism. And then we updated the, the kiosk system. And now we're expanding into uh, buying a van for a handicap accessible to be able to transport elderly veterans or veterans that are disabled 
and their surviving spouses to just local areas, local local stuff. And when I say local, I mean Hopkins County veterans. And if they need to go to the VA, Dallas, Bonham, Greenville, we'll be able to take them there as well. But surviving spouses too, that a lot of people forget about. Um, when they lose their husband, obviously, you know, they're, they, they still need help. So uh, we're gonna help them take them to the store, prescription, hospital appointments and all that. Cause there's a lot of veterans in this town that their children have moved off and they don't have support. They don't have anyone. So we're raising money for that. And then we also, this will be the first year that we're doing scholarships. So we're given seven scholarships this year and that's just something else that we've added to it. So we're super excited. Will the scholarships be for veterans' children or for veterans? Or? So there's, it's twofold to the scholarship, which I'm pretty excited about. So when a veteran gets out of the military, sometimes they have technical training on a system that the military uses, but they don't have technical training on a system that, like a Linksys system that the civilian world uses. So when you get out, the military will pay for one cert, not the military, but the VA will pay for one certification in some area and some, some certifications they won't pay for. So what we're trying to do is raise funds. When a veteran comes to town looking for a job and the, and the company tells them, well, you've got to have this certification, well, they can come to us and we can pay or match or help get them that certification. And then the, uh, the other thing, the other uh, scholarship is for students. and. Uh, the criteria for that is is if they've helped with the Freedom Ball or the Memorial or done any volunteer work, helped with the high school, that their program, come to any of the schools that do programs, they have to be involved in some way with veterans. And that meets the criteria and then from there we'll, we'll you know, get the teachers involved and the committee involved and make our selection on that as well. But it's for students and for uh, returning veterans to help get them employment because that's, that's pretty tough. You ask any veteran, it's very hard coming out of a, a military career field that is difficult to translate into a civilian world and get gainful employment at the skill levels that they have. So we're trying to we're trying to fix that and make it right. Excellent. So talk a little bit about what goes on the evening of the ball. There's dinner and entertainment, but okay. what what are well, okay. okay? So the idea of what we've done, you can't you can't in the military we have dining in and dining outs. And you can't, it's not open to the public at all. So we've tried to take these events that we do in the military and bring them to the civilian world to where we can, we can, we can get it to where they can relate or kind of see the camaraderie and just how we, how we do business in there, the brotherhood, the sisterhood. So what we've done is if we've, we've made it a ball, but we have what we call a grog ceremony. And at the very beginning of the event, we, we do a, uh, a what they call your official party entrance as officers and honorable mention people and all that they would come in the event and then we post the colors and and then we uh, we uh, we do several videos of different traditions that we have and all that and then we do toast ceremonial toast and then uh, we have our grog bowl ceremony the grog bowl ceremony is not something you would see outside of a dining in or a dining out and it's actually when you do a dining in and dining out it's scripted so you work for several months with military members and you run through this skit and you, and you all role play in this. We can't go that far with it because I don't know how many people could quit their job and for six months and, and do this role play event thing. So we just do, we, we read a skit and pour into the grog bowl and then we have infractions if throughout the night if someone, if, if a uh, lady stands up from the table and the gentlemen at the table do not stand up, that's an infraction. And if it's reported, they have to come forward and it's reported to us and then they're punished and they're punished by drinking from the grog bowl. Well, so, all right. <laughs> or, and if you, you can't leave the mess, if you try to leave the mess without asking, requesting permission and you get caught, you have to come drink from the grog bowl. You'll be reported and drink from the grog bowl. Or if you improper toast, just different things like that. But at the same time, we kind of make it up as we go. That's so. fine. <laughs> so it's educational for non-military yes. folks to learn some right. of the and traditions. It's very, you'll see, and of course you're going to be there, but you'll see that um, a lot of people, they get an inside look on the camaraderie and the brother and sisterhood that we have across all branches. I know we give each other a hard time, but we have each other's back. And I mean, we all speak the same language. And it's just something neat to see. It's different. that. You know, you have to be a veteran to, to know it or to experience it. And it's, 
it's just it's very unique to what we do i like to think that we started this and no one else is doing it but we're probably not the first they're probably gonna watch this video and steal your <laughs> idea if they're not already doing it <laughs> so i'm excited to see all that so so there's dinner there's ceremonies yes. and there's um, a band yes we have there? a live band and it's soulful sounds and it's uh calvin hickerson hmm. and uh he's got a huge jazz band they play and then he DJs later on in the evening. And we also have a guest speaker and that is Donald Washington. And I don't know if you know Donald Washington, his brothers were Harry and uh, Barry Washington. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donald went on to, uh, to West Point and I think he flew uh, for the Army. Army does have airplanes, by the mm. way. I didn't know that, <laughs> but no, I did. Uh, they shouldn't, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> But uh, then he went on, I think he was the uh, uh, assistant, or, or was the uh, DA for Louisiana, maybe, I could be wrong on that. I know he did something big in Louisiana, and then he became the head of the U.S. Marshal Services for the United States, appointed by Donald Trump. So, I mean, he's, he's a pretty fa fana uh, fascinating individual, and, and we're excited about it. Everything that I heard about him is he's, he's, just, he's just phenomenal. So, Excellent. can't wait to see see him speaking. So if anybody's watching and wants to get a ticket, how do they go about getting tickets for the event? You would go about getting tickets from myself or from uh, Tully Insurance, but uh, we are almost completely out of tickets. Oh, right wow. So I think with the push and everything and everybody, we are, we are maxed out. Uh, we, try to, we try to do about 500 people and that makes it pretty tight. And we are right there at that number right now. So unfortunately, um, so if they call today, they might be able to squeeze maybe, in. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe. <laughs> but we're we're still accepting donations. Sure. Yeah. So tickets are 125, and tickets that are 125. And yeah. then donations in the amount. You know, of course, because next year, uh, uh, early mm -hmm. on, we we uh, so we sponsor 200 veterans. I say 200 veterans, 100 veterans and a guest. So we give away 200 tickets to a veteran and a guest for the evening. So, and uh, next year, May 20th, I think is is the Freedom Ball next year. Okay. So, yeah, just reach out early. I think we're gonna offer up the opportunity to buy tickets for next year at the ball. Itself. Okay. So, and this is a formal event, so yeah. folks would get dressed formal, in their best. Formal, I tell everyone, not you know, not everybody has. Uh, formal or semi-formal attire, but tell everybody just Sunday best. You know, we have some people show up in a sports coat, jeans, boots, tie, and then we have people show up in a tux. I'll be in my uh, mess dress, so, yeah. Do a lot of folks wear their military? There's a few, there's a few of them, yeah. Uh, your military coalition, your Marine Corps League, those guys, they have their, their uh, dress with their organization. So the Marines will all be in red coats and the coalition will all be in their white shirts, maybe black pants or khaki pants. So, but they'll be in some sort of uniform. There. Excellent. So let's give folks some information if they want to follow up. Uh, the Hopkins County Veterans Memorial website is hcvm.org, is that correct? And on there they can find out more about sponsoring a veteran's name or yes. donating, is that yes. true? Yes. Okay. And then what other information? There is, I think we were talking about, in addition to the kiosk, being able to look up the location of a veteran's name, there's also an app or a website for that? What there's a link. A link, and I don't okay. know if it's on, I don't know if it's on the, that website or not, okay. but there is a link uh, that you can go to where you can search and find the name okay. on your phone or on a computer. You don't have to use the kiosk there, so. Is that link on the kiosk, you think, or? I, I don't think it's on the kiosk. Okay, well, we'll find that out and maybe we can drop it in this video yes. or below, okay? So, anything else on the Freedom Ball or Veterans Memorial that we need to share or cover? We just appreciate you doing this. 
Well, yeah. gosh, I appreciate you guys coming in. Thank you so much. Thank you for serving our country. And I think also thank you for continuing to keep veterans relevant for our local yeah. community. As you mentioned, it's it's important on a personal level to the individuals and their families that served. So it takes folks doing the extra effort to keep that out there in everybody's mind. So thank you. I just want to mention too, like Tommy Allison, he's one of the originators one of the, I mean, the began with this whole thing and their organization and my organization this is all volunteer work and they started it and i'm grateful for what they started because we were able to jump on the bandwagon with them and just i mean it's just it's going we're doing better and we've got a lot of things going on with it and all of that but i mean they were the visionaries they saw it and we're just we're just proud of them and clayton mcgraw yeah uh, pam elliott um who else am I missing? Don Roundtree. Roundtree. Um, Dina Lloyd. Dina Lloyd. Art. What's Art's last Art name? Art Romanowski. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they're just so proud of those guys and what, what they saw and what it means. Because it means the world to me. When You know, that was one of the deciding factors when I moved here, too, was how military-oriented and, and how much this community appreciated veterans. And every veteran that moves here says the same thing. I see them all. You know, first time I met you, it was at the July 4th uh, concert, the Independence Day celebration, in your uniform. And I love that event because yeah. the seats down front are for veterans. There's lots of veterans there. And it's just a good night to celebrate the community and our veterans. So, so Linda, you may not be aware of this, but when we were raising that $150,000 for that soldier statue, uh, Bobby and Frankie Price gave us a car and gave us a truck, which we auctioned off to raise money for that. Oh, I did not know that. Excellent. Well, they were veterans, so it meant a lot to they them sure as were. well. Yeah. Um, one more thing that I wanted to talk to y'all both about, you know, um, 30, 40, 50 years from now, we sure don't want to end up like Virginia's memorial. So donations are accepted, but are there some other ways that veterans or their families can help support the memorial or just local citizens that want to say thank you to veterans? Possibly uh, cash donations like you talked about, attending the Freedom Ball, including uh, the memorial in a wheel. Yes. Or an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And of course, the memorial is a 501c3, so that should be tax deductible. They would need yes. to yeah. talk to their um, accountant. But so those those are anything. Y'all are open to a lot. Cars, trucks, and cash, right? right. <laughs> well, and something else, too. you got to keep in mind that we have a committee, then we have an account. And it takes two names to write a check. Yeah, all the safeguards are in place. So that money's gonna be there for future needs of yeah. the memorial. Excellent. Yeah. I think that, that means a lot because, you know, everybody wants their children and grandchildren to be able to go find their names on the wall and it to be a nice, pristine area for folks to yeah. see. So thank y'all very much for being here today and thank you for joining us and watching. Uh, on behalf of uh, Chad's Media and Front Porch News, we are glad you joined us. Next week or soon, Tyler will be back with another great show and thank you all again for being here.